This is CBY, Christian Broadcasting of Yakima, your local Christian television station, bringing to our valley quality Christian programming for more than 40 years. Hello and thank you for joining us for Good News in the Valley, your local Christian news magazine. Our first story, you'll meet the new administrative assistant and nurse manager for ImagePoint Mobile Medical Services. Then we'll show highlights from the annual Central Washington Walk for Life, followed by a pro-life video. And then we'll close once again with some comments from Jared Sessler, a true patriot who is running for the United States Congress. So stay tuned and find out how you can meet and help support Jared at an upcoming event. Now, our feature story highlights the ministry of ImagePoint Mobile Medical Services. This interview will remind us why this ministry is so vital in our community. Let's now join Esther Kay and Jessica Bullis as they share about the ministry and about an upcoming event. Hi, I'm Esther Kay with ImagePoint, and I'm here with... Jessica, I'm the nurse manager for ImagePoint Mobile Medical Services. And today we are here to tell you about who we are as a ministry and what's coming up. We just went through our annual Central Washington Walk for Life and it was a huge success despite the horrible weather. Yeah. We had about 125 people come out and uh, take a stand for life in our community and we're just so grateful that it was such a huge success. And um, upcoming, we have our first annual quilts and more auction and fundraiser and we've already had a huge turnout for um, donations. Jessica, you want to talk about some of the donations that have come in? Yes, we have some amazing handcrafted quilts um, from local vendors and there's quite a few other items, um, just miscellaneous items. There's a photography session, some handcrafted wooden signs mm -hmm. and just many more furniture and yep. antique bed. So it's going to be, it's our first annual and we're looking forward to doing this every year. So stay yep. tuned. Yes, exactly. Um, we are very excited. It's going to be located at 3902 uh, Summit View Avenue at Simply Jesus Church, and it will be February 24th from 9 a.m. to noon. Um, for more information, you can contact us through our website. Um, and we just want to talk about what some of that, uh, those funds will be going to. Um, Jessica, can you talk to yeah. us about what some of the services are that we provide to the community? Yes. Um, so we are a mobile medical clinic. Um, we are parked right next to Planned Parenthood and our goal is to provide free services to women that are facing unplanned pregnancies, women that are in crisis. Mm -hmm. So some of our services are free STI testing, pregnancy testing, and ultrasound services. Um, also we do provide community referrals. So our, our patients, they'll come in and they'll be feeling scared, they don't know where to turn, they don't know if they can even do it, if they are able to continue the pregnancy, and they come in scared. And what I've seen is just providing that ultrasound and them seeing their baby's heartbeat. Um, they come in scared and then they leave hopeful and they leave encouraged. So for me, I was an ER nurse for 13 years. And I'm used to seeing people in crisis, but just being able to see that change from the minute they walk in till they leave, um, it's very, very rewarding for me. That's um, amazing. It's yeah. such an important thing to have in our community. And, yeah. um, you know, it's impacted my life as well. And as a mom, you know, mm -hmm. I do, I personally remember that moment when I saw yeah. my, my daughter for the first yeah. time on the ultrasound mm -hmm. and it, it really was a life changing moment for me. Yeah. Um, so I, I can understand how that would be yeah. for others as well. Um, you know, that's such a shift from emergency room right. to this yeah. type of ministry. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about how that came right. to be, how you came mm -hmm. to make that change. Well, you know, it's interesting because in nursing school, I always said, I will never work with a <laughs> pregnant mother. I will never. And so the Lord has a sense of humor. Yes, he does. But it was about a year and a half ago when I was an ER traveling nurse, and the Lord was very clear to me that he wanted me to move to Yakima and to take this job. 
And I initially was said, absolutely not. There's no way I'm doing it. But the Lord, you know, he, I've seen the Lord's heart for these women and these babies. Mm. And that I think is what has impacted me the most is just seeing the heart of compassion of the Lord towards these women and these babies that he really cares about them enough to bring a ER nurse all the way from the other side of the state to come and do this. So for me, it's just, it's strengthened my relationship with the Lord and it's just, yes, been incredibly rewarding. So That is so awesome. Yes. Um, well, we're really grateful to have you. I know <laughs> personally you. you've been impactful in my life in yeah. a positive way. And yeah. it's been a really beautiful thing to see yeah. how the Lord has yeah. built you up as a person and yeah. is working through you in this ministry and just being the hands and feet mm -hmm. of Jesus. And it's, yeah. you know, I think a lot of people don't know how we are different yeah. from a lot of other ministries that yeah. do help women and, right. and babies. It, yeah. Is there anything that you could tell our viewers that maybe aren't familiar yeah. with who we are, how we are different? Right. And so we are a like a crisis responder for these women in crisis. We That is our main focus is to reach them at the point of crisis, um, almost kind of keeping our schedule to where that is the priority. Mm. You know, there we keep our services limited and we're very focused on being that crisis point for these women when they really need it. Um, and there's some other amazing organizations in our community that provide quite a bit more resources. And so we kind of, we like to refer to them for different things. And so um, we provide a non-judgmental, um, unbiased services. Any, any woman in this community, no matter what their background, no matter what their lifestyle is, they do feel comfortable coming into us. And that, for me as an ER nurse, that for me is very comforting that they, you know, even if their values don't line up with our values, it doesn't stop them from seeking treatment from us. They know that they are there and they will be loved. They will leave feeling better than they came in. So, that's amazing. Yeah. That is so amazing. I, mm -hmm. That's so encouraging. You know, um, like you said, there are a lot of other organizations yeah. and I believe they all have a place of value. Yeah. You know, but it definitely seems like the mm -hmm. Lord has chosen to use ImagePoint in a unique yes, way definitely. to reach yeah. to reach those that would not necessarily mm -hmm. otherwise be reached or not yeah. necessarily otherwise feel comfortable receiving services. And yeah. those are important services. Right. Well, and due to our location, we get a lot of um, very unique cases that happen to be driving by, happen to be walking by, seeing other providers in the area. And they end up at our door and the Lord just seems to have these divine appointments. And sometimes it's not even related to crisis pregnancy. It just, they happen to be in some sort of crisis, just needing, um, you know, a word of encouragement or just needing to hear something positive. And so that's been really cool to see the Lord. He, we don't like to put the Lord in a box there. <laughs> that's, that's a good thing. I think he doesn't yeah. like being put in a box. No. So. So back to the fundraiser, yes. um, now that everyone knows kind of what we are about mm -hmm. and who we are, um, yes. what are you looking forward to seeing from the fundraiser? Are you looking forward to seeing, you know, just funding or is there other aspects to yeah. it that you're looking forward to? Well, I'm looking forward just to giving the community a chance to hear more about us, to mm -hmm. maybe get to know us. Um, hear more about our services, um, maybe even decide to volunteer. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking for like-minded people who want to be a part of the ministry, not just financially, but also, you know, giving of their time, talents, um, and just kind of spending time together in fellowship. I think that'll be a really, I'm looking forward to that. And there's refreshments from uh, donated generously by Taste and See. Oh, we're always awesome. so thankful for them. Yes. And, um, yeah, just getting to know some people in the community. Yeah. I think it'll be great. And again, that is February 24th, um, and it will be at Simply Jesus Church, which mm -hmm. is very conveniently located right off of 40th Avenue. Yes. So it should be an easy place for people to find yes. us and yes. speak and to us. And we're also looking for more quilts. If anyone has any quilts or knows someone who mm -hmm. is into quilting who would like to donate for a good cause, yeah. um, feel free to contact us um, right. with that. So, And there is something called a vision tour. Would you like to just briefly describe what yeah. that is? Um, so our medical clinic, like I said, it's a mobile medical clinic. And so we are in a fifth wheel. And so our exam room we have, you walk in, there's the reception area. And then there is the um, nurse exam room with the ultrasound machine, the patient bed. 
and then also the patient advocate room where they receive their resources. And um, so what we do is we like to take the mobile unit to different churches and then uh, allow people to have time to kind of walk through and see what we do and to talk to us more. So um, if there's any churches in the area who are interested in having a vision tour, we're going to be starting those this spring. Um, and we have had quite a bit of interest, so just let us know and we'll be happy to put you on the list. So. Awesome. Yeah. And who would they contact to do that? Um, just go through our website, um, www.imagepointmms.org, um, and there is a contact um, information on there. Perfect. So, yes, we'd Perfect. love to see you. It would be a fun time just to get to know people there. Thank so. you so much for mm -hmm. that. Yes. yes, and if anyone is interested in finding out anything else, again, that website is www.imagepointmms.org. Mm -hmm. And we just look forward to hearing from the public and seeing more of our community and being a part of it. Thank you so much. And back to you, Skip. Thank you, Esther and Jessica, for all you do for the unborn at Image Point Mobile Medical Services. Now, abortion is the most devastating genocide in American history. On Saturday, January 20th, people gathered at Grace of Christ Church and then walked down Yakima Avenue, united in opposition to this Holocaust. A big thank you to all who braved the weather to take a stand for life and to speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves.
Next is Jared Sessler, a constitutionalist, America first Christian and true patriot, who's running for the fourth congressional seat, currently held by Dan Newhouse, the only Republican still in Congress who voted to impeach Donald Trump. Jared will defend the families, farmers, and small businesses of Central Washington from oppressive mandates and bureaucratic practices. In Congress, Jared will fight to protect the border, uphold the U.S. Constitution, and defend the American people. Hi everyone, Jared Sessler here, and I am running for Congress, and uh, I've got a couple topics for you today that I'm going to talk about that are somewhat political related. Of course, I'm going to talk a little bit about that, but this is really an opportunity for you to hear from me, hear from my heart, and get to know me a little bit better. And uh, hopefully I inspire you to uh, trust God more and, uh, and to get involved in your community and uh, maybe even get involved in politics and certainly to help me in my campaign. I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for a call of God on my life. Uh, I've got less days ahead that I have behind me and the days that I have lived have been amazing, much due to the thanks and the blessing of the gospel of Jesus. And um, uh, I've got two brief topics that I'm going to talk to you about. Uh, the first one has to do with politics and church. And I know that's not a real popular topic, but I'm going to try to present it to you in a way that gives you a little bit of perspective on it, uh, because I think it's very important. And the truth is, uh, I, I believe it's inseparable. And I think that at times we as leaders in the church, which all of us, I think God calls us to be leaders, we avoid the topics of politics in the public square and especially in church because we think it's not appropriate or we want to use the excuse that it's illegal, which it's not, or, or things like that. And so the truth is politics affects every aspect of our lives. We cannot avoid it. Um, and we, the people, collectively made the government. The government gains its, its consent from the people, only from the people. I think a lot of times, our, especially in America, our government has gotten so big that we think of it as a separate entity that has a life of its own. It gets its entire life from us. We give it its consent. And uh, our entire freedom uh, is protected by, our structure of freedom is protected by our political system. And so knowing that our freedom comes from God, which I'll, I'll, I'll talk about briefly, it's important for us to also uh, protect that. And, and oftentimes that means that we're going to need to talk about politics in the public square. Uh, I think there's a lot of leaders in the church who, who say, okay, well, I don't want to teach people or I don't want to tell people how to vote. I, I want to argue and say, respectfully, you don't have to tell people how to vote. But you can certainly talk about the issues that are very important to us, right? And you don't necessarily have to tell people how to vote in the, in the midst of that. So, uh, for example, you can talk about topics that we all agree on. For example, uh, it takes a God-made man and woman to make a baby. We can all agree on that. And that's a topic that we can make very clear in the church. Now, some might see that as political in today's environment, but... It's not. Laws that circumvent basic biblical principle, like how we define marriage, are very much topics that we can talk about. What are we doing, um, or what, what are we not doing in terms of, um, you know, people that get caught up into their false idol worship? And when we don't talk about these things, essentially we're pandering to those people that are sinning or people, I call it false idol worship, but if we avoid talking about those, we're sort of con condoning it, we're, we're approving of it. Another thing is ungodly rules or mandates or laws, such as in here in Washington State, Senate Bill 5599, and the crux of that is that it, it is a state-sponsored kidnapping. You can lose your child to uh, a shelter or to essentially to the state's control simply by disagreeing with them on their gender preference, as if there is one. Uh, we all believe and know that God is the only one that chooses gender, and so the, this whole idea of this whole language that's developed around this gender ideology is fake and false. And so we can talk about that, right? We can talk about other ungodly rules and laws and mandates that are put on us. We can talk about those, and we should talk about those in church. 
We could talk about illegal or illegitimate voting practices, things that hurt our ability to have a voice in the political system and unjust persecution. I think about uh, President Trump and the things that are going on with his candidacy and the ways that he is being unjustly persecuted and prosecuted, even prosecuted for things that he didn't do, things that are made up only because the media wants to have those headlines that will change the way we think about him. What about treaties and agreements, whether they're private or public, with ungodly uh, countries, regimes, even terrorist organizations? Those are things that we could talk about. So these are just examples that I'm bringing up. There's dozens and dozens more of things that we can talk about from the pulpit and we can mention. And maybe even we start to have a, a special five minutes or ten minutes where we're talking about those. Because the threat in this is that we could be in a position which we're on the cusp of that and we've seen some of that over the last few years where the, the state is coming in, whether it's a state or federal government is coming in and saying, well, you know, we just don't think that you should meet together anymore. Or we don't think that you should have church or we want to control how you're doing your worship or, or those kinds of things. And so I'm just asking you and encouraging you to be more bold and to trust God to allow to start opening doors and addressing these issue, issues. If you don't do these things or you don't open that, then you're really contributing to the demise of America and literally allowing the, the evil and the enemy to dominate our lives instead of allowing God to lead us in, in, into that direction. So I just want to encourage you with that. I know it doesn't necessarily come across incredibly uh, happy, but it's a tough topic. All of these are tough topics. I'm with you in full agreement when I say, boy, I wish we didn't have to talk about this. I wish this wasn't an issue. On the campaign trail, I get questions where in the back of my mind, I think, oh my goodness, I wish we didn't have this topic that we had to talk about. And I will just go back to my encouragement of how we address people that are stuck in false idol worship, which is sin. You say, I love you. What you're doing is wrong. Uh, this is not a healthy path for you. I don't see a good outcome in this for you. And I want to help you make changes. And I believe God loves you and wants to see you make changes. That's the kind of leadership that our kids need. That's the kind of leadership that our, our people need. Uh, it may not sound healthy because you're, you're confronting them in the midst of something that they're doing, but it actually is good and healthy. And that structure is like arms hugging them. It's comforting. So that's my comments on politics in the church. So this next one... Uh, I want to talk about in terms of where we're at as America and is America in trouble. And let me just give you a high picture, kind of a, a, a top-down view on this. There's a lot of people that are very pessimistic on America and what America stands for and whether or not America has a future. And I want to encourage you in this. And basically the path I want to take you down, and this is something that God showed me just recently, is think about the day when you accepted Christ or that period of your life when you accepted the Lord. And that salvation became real to you. Now, you know, for me, that was almost 30 years ago. It was over 30 years ago now. Uh, I can look at my life since then, and I can see lots of gain. I can see lots of growth, lots of transformation, lots of positive that has come from that. Through the years, God has refined me. He's changed me. He's grown me. He's made me into the leader that I am today. It didn't happen overnight. It wasn't easy. Some, some days were difficult. Some weeks were hard. Some years were just plain hard. Um, but the outcome is a life submitted to God. And that life looks more and more glorious every single year. Um, and I become more useful to God. It is more joy-filled and more graceful as I understand the gospel and I see that implemented in my life. And I'm more passionate about godly principles and fighting for godly principles. And I'm more interested in protecting the weak and the hurting. This is my life, and I can say that I'm better today in my 50s than I was in my 20s. Thanks be to God. So what about America in this example? So think about back in the late 1700s when America was founded. Was America perfect? Was America in good shape? Was it healthy? <laughs> or was it a mess? Uh, was it broken? Was it filled with rebels that had the audacity of leaving and disconnecting from England and, and breaking all ties? Uh, did the, did the country, was the country financially sound? Did it have any money at all? Uh, the truth is it was fraught with internal struggles and battles that waged through the Civil War nearly a hundred years later. 
Um, Civil War was in the 1860s, and, and you know the country was founded in the late 1700s. We know 1776, but the truth is there was efforts for 10 or 15 years before that. And then nearly 100 years later, 1865 is when President Lincoln was assassinated. That was right, at, right after the end of the Civil War. What was the Civil War about? The Civil War was all about unity. It was about unity of the, of the colonies at the time. You could call it the states, because if we didn't have unity, we wouldn't have secu security and safety. It was driven a lot by slavery, but abolishing slavery wasn't the point. The fight over slavery is what caused the Civil War, but the, the point of the Civil War was unity. So America was a mess, and that was almost 100 years later. Now fast forward another 100 years, and we're still struggling with racism into the 1950s and 1960s. Just look at the record. It was a mess, right? But it was improving. It was always getting better. Even today, look at the scourge on America, the biggest scourge on America, which, was, which is and, and was abortion. Maybe a third or more of our country doesn't exist because of abortion. And I think it's, a, it's easy to agree that America was not perfect, just as we weren't perfect when God saved us. But just as God saved us, and then he takes us through what's called a sanctification process that really lasts our entire lives. Likewise, he does that with our country, and I believe he's done that with our country. And so my encouragement today is that God ordained America. And I believe that in my heart and in my mind that he is continuing to sanctify America. It's not the demise of America that we're headed to. It's something even greater. It, just like in our own lives, in our own salvation, our own sanctification process. We are facing challenges, um, but these challenges are going to pass in time, and I believe that we're going to be better off coming out the other end. The key is to realize that amidst these challenges, God is highlighting the evil, and he is making it all the more clear for us what this country was, was founded for, what the history of this great country is. It, it is incumbent on us not to fear and thinking that the country is about to implode, fear is not from God. God wants us to have a healthy fear of Him because of His ultimate authority, but not to fear living in the world, or not to fear anything of this world. I believe that the, the model that God wants us to see is that just as we pray and seek Him to heal us and to transform our lives, we should expect and to pray the same for our country. We want our country to get better to submit to God and to be helpful to the rest of the world and to, the, and to live out the life and the vision that God has created for it and for each of us. That's my word for, for this season. Thank you. To help support Jared Sessler Unseat Newhouse, a Patriot Rally is set for March 5th at 6 p.m. at the Fairbridge Hotel and Convention Center. Let's stand together and say yes to America and yes to Jared. Come enjoy great speakers and a fabulous provided barbecue dinner. Yeah, that is a free dinner. For more information, contact Matt Barker. Well, that concludes our program. May God bless you and may God bless and keep America.